welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us. You know, on today's show, we're going to talk about soybeans and raising better yields. And really, Brian, that same discussion comes to all the crops on your farm. There's probably right. a favorite crop that you've got, just like we do on our farm. You know, we probably like growing corn more than anything else because we like to argue about it. We like to shoot for 300 bushel corn. I don't know. We like I to see like who's soybeans, gets, though. We like to see who's <laughs> gets taller and all that. But soybeans have been a really good money maker for us for the last few years. And I think that second or third crop on your farm could be a big one for you as well. Well, we also have a difficult to control weed of the week. It's a little bit challenging. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm later in the show. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to discuss some of the benefits of reduced tillage. So if you're a non-farmer, we just want you to understand some of the things that farmers are doing to make their ground better. Well, you know, if you were in uh, conventional till and you're used to seeing fields look completely black, you probably think, wow, there's a lot of plant residue on top of the ground here. I'm looking at it on the end rows of our field and I'm saying, oh man, there isn't very much residue left. We had a lot of breakdown last fall. So everybody's idea of what reduced tillage is may vary slightly, but when we're talking about reduced tillage, we're talking about doing very little tillage. Like here we've done some strip till, you know, on probably eight or 10 inch wide bands every 30 inches throughout the field. So maybe we're tilling a third of the field up, just right where we're going to plant, but the rest, we're leaving the residue stand. And the main reason why we started doing reduced tillage on our own farm is we have some hills. And what the government does is they will come out and determine whether your fields are considered highly erodible or not. So basically, if you have some hilly ground, they're gonna call it highly erodible. And then you're required, if you wanna remain in the government farm program, to keep a certain amount of residue on the surface of the soil in order to help prevent erosion. And for farmers, this has really changed over the last few decades in the equipment that farmers have at their at the ready. Like for example here, this strip till machine, we didn't have a strip till machine 10 years ago. Knowing what I know now, I sure wish we did because I like doing less tillage in our field. There's a lot of good benefits to that. And I also like how we can place our fertilizer deep in the soil while not having to till everything up. It's a pretty good deal. Okay, so Darren said we didn't have a strip till machine 10 years ago, but what we did do is we no-tilled a fair amount of ground in this highly erodible land that we do have. And the problem with that is we had so much residue on the surface of the soil, we couldn't cut through that as well as what we would like to. So we didn't get as good a stand. We didn't have as many plants growing out in the field as what we thought. Well, we couldn't cut and, through it. But the other thing yep. is you have all this residue laying on top of the ground and all of a sudden now you get these little tiny plants that have to push up through all that stuff. And it was really well, hard for that, them. That was a little part of it. But the other thing is it kept the ground a lot cooler. And I mean, we're talking in the range of six to eight degrees cooler in the spring versus our conventional till ground just across the fence. Okay, so to us, that was a big problem because our corn or our soybeans didn't get nearly as good a start in the no-till ground. So with things like strip till, we like that because we get the benefits of conventional tillage where it's warm right in the row, yet we're able to leave lots of residue out here. So we more than meet the government's requirement on having residue out here. We have a lot less wind erosion and we have a lot less rain erosion too. Well, another good thing about reduced tillage is you don't have to spend all that time out in the field working up ground. Yep. I, mean, I think back to when we were kids and how many field passes we'd have to make working those stalks in and then leveling things out and then maybe another pass to incorporate some herbicide in the spring. And wow, there are a lot of guys doing at least three passes of tillage across the field. Now we just run one time with this strip till machine and we put on our fertilizer application, our tillage, our seed bed preparation all in one trip across the field. The other nice thing about it is when we have all this residue out here, we're over time building soil organic matter a little bit. Whereas if a farmer is doing full scale tillage, he's decreasing his organic matter in the soil. And when he has less organic matter, that means he's gonna have more problem with compaction. He's gonna have less soil life there. He's gonna have fewer nutrients available for future crops. There are a lot of bad things that happen when you deplete your soil's organic matter. So by reducing tillage, we can keep our organic matter levels where they are and even build them over time, which is great. Well, there are a lot of things uh, that farmers consider when they determine if they want to do full scale tillage in their fields or do reduced tillage. One of those considerations may just be our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 
Today's number is three. You can see it everywhere, and it can stand for almost anything. But when it comes to protecting the nitrogen that feeds your crops, three is the special number that sets Nutrisphere N, Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager, apart because Nutrisphere N has proven to reduce all three forms of nitrogen loss, which adds up to keeping more nitrogen and yield where it belongs. So ask for Nutrisphere N, the stabilizer that fights nitrogen loss three ways. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature, and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green-striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green-striped pipe you can count on. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. Advanced Farming Systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. Our precision farming solution is less complex and built right into our equipment. Factory integrated with open architecture, AFS works with all of your implements, no matter what color they are. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling 24-7, 365. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Over the last few years, as Darren and I have traveled around the country talking to farmers, one of the biggest comments, or the most common comments we get from farmers is simply, my corn yields keep going way, way up every year, but I'm really struggling with my soybean yields. Why? What can I do to get better? Well, you know what, Brian? You aren't gonna get better at something if you don't work at it and you don't focus on it. And I'm not trying to criticize anybody, but when I look at our own operation, man, we focus on corn. We want to get 300 bushel corn and how quickly can we do that on our farm? And we're putting all this energy into corn and soybeans are like the second crop. Yeah, but and it, so it, many guys I talk to, it's the same thing. Well, man, I'm doing this on my corn and doing this on my, my corn. And I, I say, well, what are you changing on your soybean plant? Well, uh, yeah, I don't but, know. Yeah, but it's a lot more fun to talk about corn when, oh, I can get 200 bushels and we get 250 oh, and it's 10 bushels. Feet tall. That's I right. Understand. Yeah, it's, I understand. It's awesome. And so it's just one of those things. King corn, I mean, that, that nickname's been around for years and years because farmers have focused on this. And yeah, soybeans kind of is a secondary crop for a lot of farmers, but here's the way I look at it. If I've got a good soybean price and I can raise 60 plus bushel soybeans consistently, which we're now doing on our farm, well, that makes pretty good money too, you know? Well, there's another thing that I really like about soybeans, and here's the thing that should give you the most hope of anything, because it, it certainly does for me. When I look at a soybean crop, you can never give up on soybeans. I mean, there are guys in the, the Mid-South this year uh, with this past crop that they gave up on their soybeans. They thought they were dead. All of a sudden, they got some rain. They started putting on some pods again, and guys said, wow, I'm excited about my beans again. And the same thing uh, in our part of the world, in the upper Midwest this year, you know, guys thought the soybeans looked pretty good early. Well, then the drought really hit in full effect. And guys thought, ah, oh, I'm not gonna spend any more money out there because I'm not gonna have a shot. Well, if you guys were lucky enough, like we were on our farm to catch a little rain in August, and all of a sudden we had fantastic soybean yields, and you know, it's the crop that you just don't give up on. Like corn, if well, you have trouble early, you're pretty much yeah, gonna have a bad it, year. It's whole different, and it comes back to, it, it, first of all, if you're going to raise a good soybean crop, you need to understand it's very different from corn. Soybeans need a lot of their nutrients late in the season. They need rain late in the season, whereas corn needs everything early in the season. That's whole different. Also, with soybeans, they like lots of sunlight. They like sunlight, they like heat, 
especially about mid-season. So this year when everybody was crying because of drought, I just said, you know, in a lot of cases, all we have to do is get some late rains and we could still have pretty good soybeans, which we did. So yeah, exactly. I agree with your point 100%. You just don't want to give up on beans. Now, well, as you can see, Brad and I are pretty passionate about raising better soybeans. We've got a lot to tell you. So let's take a break and we'll be right back. For lower cost, higher production, see your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Ask about the best production-built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport to easy use. 12 to 85 foot widths, heavy-duty 4x8 3 8 inch tube frame, and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco Land Rollers, improved soil to seed contact, faster, more uniform germination, less moisture loss, eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Visit NorthCountryMarketing.biz or call. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, Save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. You can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. Give your crops more than just NPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. MicroLink, linking yield to potential. Let's start with the soybean program and talk a little bit about what we're doing and what some other guys around the country are doing that are really having some success with soybeans. It all starts with picking the right seed. Now, you have to have genetics yeah, but that come give you on, that Aaron, top end yield potential. I, I mean, let's be honest. Does it really make five bush, more than five bushels difference which beans you pick? Yes, it does. I don't think it does. Yes, it does. But it doesn't no make 50 bushel difference. <laughs> right. it, it's going to make five to 10 bushel difference. So you pick the yep. right variety with good yield potential. Now, the other thing is you need the right defensive package. Now, if you've got well, soybean cyst nematodes thing. in your area, you just have to plant a number that's going to protect you from soybean cyst nematodes. Or if you have sudden death syndrome that hits your part of the country, you have to have a variety that can tolerate that. Let's step back just a little bit. If you're going to pick the right variety, what are you picking for? You're going to pick for iron chlorosis. All right, well, if you would lower your soil pH, get your soil fixed, you won't have iron chlorosis in the first place. Uh, and, and several of these other issues that are out there, if you take care of your soil, if you feed the plant well, if you do all the other things right, then what I'm trying to say here, my whole point is, then the variety doesn't become that big a deal. And I don't care which variety you pick, as long as you're picking new genetics and the right trait, you should be getting real close to top yield or within five bushels one way or the other. All right, so you get the right variety. Then what you need to do is use a good seed treatment. And when we start out with seed treatment, some guys will say, are you talking about inoculant here or a fungicide or an insecticide? And I say, yep, all oh, of those. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and, and to take it one step further, uh, other biological products too. So on our farm, we've got all four of those things in there and our grand total cost is maybe, what, $13? You know, yeah, I it's, mean, it's, it's a bushel not that, of beans. It's not that much, but it's very critical to do this because you say, okay, hold on. You just told me that yield's going to get determined late in the season with uh, fertility available and some moisture. And yeah, that's going to have a big part of it. But if you don't set the table right, you aren't even going to make it there. 
So you've got to have a good start. You have to protect yourself from early season diseases so you don't have problems later on. All right, the two big things that I see in a lot of fields that should add up to 20 bushels or more, number one is drainage, number two is fertility. So if you don't have good drainage in your field, you're, you're going to do nothing but fight it all the time. And I, I often talk to farmers about tiling and I say, you know, I really honestly believe that tiling helps soybeans even more than it helps corn and we already know it helps corn a lot. So that's one of the reasons why on our farm we were able to bump our yields as much as we have been because we don't have those bad areas where we're only getting 20 bushels. Now every area is yielding 60 bushels across the field. That's fun. Coming back to the fertility thing, you got to address fertility. And I talked to so many farmers. I, I'd be willing to bet you it's 90% of farmers or more that are putting on all their fertilizer in the corn, they're putting on no fertilizer in the soybeans, and they're hoping that enough is left over from the corn. But when I talk to most guys and say, well, what are you getting for corn yields? And then I ask them how much fertilizer they're putting out there, what I figure out, the fertilizer you put out there got all used up by the corn. What was left for the soybeans? Not much. It's real simple. If you don't feed the crop, there's no way you can expect good yield. If you want high yielding soybeans, you probably have to add some nitrogen in your fertility program in addition to having just an unbelievable amount of rhizobia bacteria on those roots to feed that engine. Because if you want to get 100 bushel soybeans or more, you've got to have plenty of nutrition there. All right, let's come back to that nutrition. What we would encourage you to do is on your iPad or your iPhone, just download the free Ag PhD fertilizer removal app, and you can see how much a good corn crop or a good soybean crop would remove from the ground. But what we're talking about with soybeans, and I'll just tell you in our farm, we're using a lot of P and K, and especially K. Keep in mind that just for the grain only, the soybean crop uses almost double the amount of potassium that it does compared to phosphorus. So, I mean, it, it's a tremendous requirement for potassium, and a lot of people just don't even realize that. In addition, don't forget about the micronutrients. Probably will only cost you five or ten bucks an acre, grand total. That's it. It's no big expense, but if you don't do it, you're probably not going to get that last two to five bushels. Okay, now in crop, we've got a number of things. When it comes to weed control, Roundup ready or Roundup resistant weeds, I should say, are really spreading across our country. So we like to start with two or three different pre-emerge herbicides to make sure that we can stop as many of those small seeded broadleaf weeds as yep, possible. Yeah, but it's not just starting with two or three. It's starting with the right ones. So for example, I've talked to a lot of farmers here just lately that have said, well, I want to put some Flexstar in the soil or I want to put some First Rate in the soil. You know, there are all these combination products that have Flexstar or First Rate and you can put them in the soil and they'll work fine. But the thing is, they are our very best options post-emerge for certain weeds. So what we prefer to do is save those options, save the Flexstar and First Rate for use post-emerge. So use something different. And what, what we do on our own farm is we'll use one of the Authority or Valor products. And I really like throwing a little bit of Metribuzin or the old Sencor out there. You don't have to use much. If you've got high pH ground, use a sixth of a pound per acre. You don't have a whole lot of risk. It's dirt cheap, buck and a half, two bucks an acre and it adds a little kick to the Valor Authority. And then on top of that, use Treflan Sonline or Prowl. So you get three different modes of action, all for probably, again, 12, 13 bucks an acre, not that much money. One other big thing I always like to talk to people about is spraying insects and spraying for diseases timely. If you don't spray timely, you're gonna have problems because you've allowed bugs to feed for quite a while on your plants. You're gonna have more problems with disease and you're just gonna have more yield loss. So when we talk about bugs like soybean aphids, bean leaf beetles, grasshoppers, and whatever insect you're dealing with, if it's a harmful insect to soybeans, spray early. Insecticides dirt cheap. We're talking two, three bucks an acre for the full rate. Costs almost nothing. And you can tank mix it with a lot of herbicides. Same thing with fungicide. Most fungicides can be tank mixed with most herbicides if you're out there. But I will just tell you on our farm, we've been spraying insecticide and fungicide for many years now in soybeans, and it adds several bushels per acre. The other thing we're doing is trying to add a little punch at the end. We're using things like MegaGrow and AC97 that have growth promotants in them to try and push some more fertility in that plant, convince that plant that everything is good and it needs to hang on to every pod that it could possibly make. And those kind of things are giving us some good yield response as well. Now, in your area, you may have other yield limiting factors. If you don't have your fertility program right, it's probably not going to do you a lot of good to try some foliar things because you know what? You've already given up a lot of that potential to begin with. Uh, but if you've got a good program going, then those foliar apps can certainly help as well. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of products you can use, 
techniques you can use, things you can do to increase yield on your farm. And you might say, well, I don't want to spend another $25, $30 an acre on soybeans. And what we talk often about here in Ag PhD is forget about expense. The word expense should not even be in your vocabulary. It should be the word investment. And with every one of these things that we talked about, whether you believe what we're telling you or not, I don't care. Try these things out on your farm. That's how we proved it to ourselves. We did trials for several years, split the plan around things, did, did uh, strips through our fields with sprayers. We did all kinds of testing work, and we've just found a lot of these things to pay. But that's what we encourage you to do. Try a lot of different things out. If you're not trying new things, then chances are your neighbor is trying things and he's getting ahead of you. And you don't want your neighbor to get ahead of you. Try some new things out. Do some different things on your farm and don't be afraid to invest a little bit of money in your soybean crop. It can really pay off. All right, well, here's where the way I look at it. You don't want to do all those things on all your ground because you're going to spend too much money. You're going to invest unwisely. So what you need to do is take one thing and say, you know what, I'm going to try that pre-emerge program and I'm going to do that on some of my acres and see what difference that makes. Yeah, but and then what... I'm also going to try uh, doing, you know, one other thing on these other acres. And then you can see how changing one input yeah. impacted your yield. So now all of a sudden you figure, wow, using those pre's, that added 10 bushels to my yield. Great. Well, changing this up with how I did my insect and disease spraying, that added another five bushels in this other field. And then next year, you put both those things together and hope that you get you know, close to 15 bushel difference. And, and that kind of stuff can really make an impact on your farm over time. Don't try and do it all at once because it's gonna to be too tough to manage. Okay, so none of this stuff is going to work though, unless you control our Weed of the Week. It can be a tough one to stop. Can you identify this week's weed? The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Weed of the Week is Texas Panicum. It's mainly a problem in the southern United States. What do you know about Texas Panicum, Darren? Well, it looks a lot like large crabgrass and broadleaf signal grass. So for me, it's one of those weeds that I don't see all that often, but I can still identify it, and here's why. Large crabgrass just has a membranous ligule, and the ligule on Texas Panicum has a membrane, but it has a fringe of hair across the top. So that's an easy way to tell those two apart. Then when you're looking at broadleaf signal grass, the leaves aren't all hairy like Texas Panicum is on both sides of that leaf. So I think Texas Panicum is pretty easy to identify, Brian. It's just well, control that's difficult. <laughs> that's what I was just going to say, and in part because if you get to corn, the standard grass killers aren't going to cut it. Surpass, Harness, Outlook, and Dual, they're awesome on the foxtails, but they're just not going to do They're not old panicum. enough, Brian. we got to go back <laughs> to the old days, like right. Eradicane. That did a little better job on it. If you're in a situation where you can double incorporate Eradicane, that would be the best. Or a lot of guys will just mix some Eradicane in with one of those killers like uh, Harness, Surpass, or Dual. Yep, actually Balance Flex too is not that bad. And Roundup and Liberty seem to be okay yet and, on this week. And Accent's decent in conventional corn if you get it when it's small. And really if you're spraying for broadleaves, Callisto and Lotus have a little bit of impact on it as well. Now that same story is true in soybeans. If you're out spraying for broadleaves, Pursuit and Raptor aren't great on Texas Panicum, but they're actually not too bad. So that's kind of a good way to go on your broadleaves. But you have to start with Treflan, Sonlan, or Prowl Down. Then you could follow up with something like Select Max or Roundup or Liberty, of course. Yep. In wheat, we would suggest using Prepare pre-emerge and then post-emerge. Something like Axial, Discover, Puma should do a fairly decent job. Well, that's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, Texas Panicum, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. AFS is less complex and built right into our equipment. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? We talked about the depth of operation for a field cultivator on a previous show. Now we'll switch the focus to maintenance in today's Iron Talk. Worn shovels are a big problem on field cultivators. They lead to streaks, 
an uneven seed bed, poor tillage, and just overall poor results. Well, the first place we generally see shovels wear out is right behind the wheels. If you catch it early, you can still move those shovels around on the machine to try to extend their life. However, shovels really aren't that expensive, so replacement is a solid option. One other thing to consider is the flowability of corn stalks and other residue through your field cultivator. As more farmers have moved to minimum tillage, we're seeing a shift to a wider shank spacing and wider sweeps to accommodate this. Just make sure that the pattern still does a nice job with light tillage and the stirring and mixing of fertilizer and pre-emerge herbicides to allow maximum crop growth and maximum weed control for your farm. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. In the world of four-wheel drive tractors, there is no name more powerful than Steiger. The newest addition to the powerful Case IH Steiger line is the Steiger Row Track, available at Titan Machinery. Designed for row crop use, the row track provides more maneuverability and reduces compaction while maintaining power and performance. It's available with 16, 18, or 24-inch tracks for row spacing as narrow as 20 inches. Visit your Titan Machinery dealer today to learn more about the Case IH Steiger Row Track. Titan Machinery, better solutions. Today's number is three. You can see it everywhere, and it can stand for almost anything. But when it comes to protecting the nitrogen that feeds your crops, three is the special number that sets Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager apart because Nutrisphere N has proven to reduce all three forms of nitrogen loss, which adds up to keeping more nitrogen and yield where it belongs. So ask for Nutrisphere N, the stabilizer that fights nitrogen loss three ways. For lower cost, higher production, Mandeco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandeco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandeco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Micronutrients are not optional for plants, they are essential. TJ Micromix is a profit-proven management tool that ensures the availability of essential secondary and micronutrients. Formulated as a dry granule or liquid, TJ Micromix is plant available, easy to mix and apply. The synergistic fertilizer mix delivers consistent yield response on a variety of crops by complementing an NPK fertilizer program. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get your TJ Micromix today. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new S Cube commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Fertilizer is a term commonly used to describe plant food. Did you realize all growing plants require primary, secondary, and micronutrients in order to grow properly and produce food for humans? For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.